So what we're going to go over in this tutorial is how to create an annotative block. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why one might want an annotative block. And one of the main reasons is, so when you insert your block into another drawing and you want to change text or an item with inside that block, such as any text or font or specification, that you can automatically, without having to explode it, change the items within there. Um, it's great to use for details, but most people use it for their title block. Um, so what this is, what you're basically doing is you're going to basically define attributes into the drawing itself so that when you put these attributes in, it'll automatically allow you to edit one part or two parts or three parts or a lot of about this whole entire object here. Um, so for example, I have a 24 by 36 title block. Um, and I already did the uh, number one right here as a uh, option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna window over to my other drawing here and I'm just gonna insert a block into it. Uh, I'm gonna insert that 24 by 36 and uh, I've been crashing a lot so hopefully it doesn't crash here, uh, but it didn't. So as you can see here, when I go to edit attributes, it's asking me right now to edit it. So if I hit okay here and I'm just gonna do a quick zoom extents, you'll see my title block in here. Now this is usually the problem. When you double click on it, nothing pops up sometimes and you have to explode it. But with an attribute, as it did right here, I can change just that one item inside of the block. So that's what we call an attributed title block, or I kind of call it a smart title block. Um, nowadays, you can even go as far as Sheet Set Manager, and that uh, video tutorial as well is located below. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna continue kind of modifying this guy a bit here. So I'm gonna go back into my original drawing and uh, show you how to do it. So um, if you notice, I have something here called address and there's a bunch of different little things that we can do in this drawing. Um, I type in my commands. Um, sometimes I don't know exactly where to find all of these items under here, but I do know where some of them are. So if you go to the draw dropdown block and you go to define attributes, it'll pull up the attribute definition block here. And from here, you can type in whatever you want. So if I just type in project, that's gonna be the tag. And then the prompt is gonna be for project number, meaning when it prompts me to input something, it's gonna ask me for the project number. And uh, more importantly, if I had something here that I typically wanted, or I always use the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, I could put that in there. Uh, more importantly is that the tag fits within the space and that the tag is kind of the same amount as the max items. You'll see why in a second. Um, now, justification, you can change these at any time, but I'm going to want middle center, so I'm going to change that now. Um, I'm not going to want this text to be annotative, so I'm going to uncheck that. Um, if you look right now, the text height is 2. Um, I don't, I'm not going to care for that, but I'm not going to worry about it either as of right now. Um, and in fact, you know, I'll just select standard or RS, fine. So I'm going to do point 0.1. Now, um, you can lock the position here. I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want any of these on, um, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Multi-line is kind of nice if you want to have, like, an address here and it's going to expand. That actually works pretty cool, and we'll use it right here. Um, I'm going to specify the insertion point, of course, and I'm going to hit OK. So I'm going to put this guy in. And uh, you'll see it's right here. It says project. Um, and I want to replace this text here. Um, so just a few things to note here is this is justified bottom center. So I'm going to click on this guy here. And I'm going to go to the properties of him. And I'm going to justify bottom center. And if you're wondering how I kind of about knew that, again, just kind of look at where this guy is here. Um, also, if you go here, it might be actually justified bottom. So if you kind of pull up the properties of this guy, it'll tell you. And this guy's justified just plain center, not bottom center or anything. So that'll probably move my insertion point up a little bit. As you can see right now, mine's right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna go to the properties. And I'm gonna change it to just plain center. If it's here, there it is. And you'll kind of see how it moves. And uh, what I'm looking to do is really match that up. So when I take this grip here, and I hold shift and I right click to the insertion point here that it lines up perfectly. Because from here, what I can do is just erase out what I had before. So from here right now, if I wanted to, I can change it to a typical project number as the tag. Again, you kind of want this to be around that same size because you want to make sure it fits in that space. 
if I just make it an X and really it, you know, it doesn't fit there, then that's not really going to be what I really want. So, um, but I'm just going to put project in here for right now. I'm going to leave it prompting me for project number and I'll make the default one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So you can kind of see how that's working there. And you can kind of see this one here is already set up and you'll see the default tag, what it's prompting me for. I'll just change it up a few minutes. Again, when you double click on it, you can change it. So, you know, anything here can all be changed. So same thing here. And sometimes what I do is, again, I'm just going to copy this one around right now. And I'm going to copy him from the insertion point there to the insertion point here. And then I might just change it to X. And I'm going to say total sheets. And again, usually that's uh, two digits for me. So I'm going to put XX. There we go. And it matches perfectly already. And again, kind of layers count a little bit in here. So if you notice right now, I'm putting on the P dims layer. Um, I'm just going to throw this stuff to layer zero right now. Uh, but it was cyan in color. So I am also going to change the color of it to cyan. Um, also, I'll check this. So if this is on a title block layer, I might as well keep these in a title block layer. Um, again, just keeping it consistent. Um, I'm doing this for a friend, so I really don't know too much about this. So as I'm going through it, I'm kind of giving you my uh, discovery process as I continue. So this will never change. This will never change. This will change. This will change. And this will change. Now, also, we have this guy here, which is sort of like the sheet name. So I'm going to do the same thing, except uh, I'm going to copy project over here. Again, from that same insertion point, and just to see, hey, it's probably set up the same way, and it is not. So if you look one here, this one's set up middle center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my guy up here to middle center. There we go. And it lines up perfectly now, right? So what I'm going to do now is double check on the font that they're using here. Um, it looks to be Arial. So I'm going to double click on my guy here. Oops, sorry, not double click on him. I'm going to pull up the properties of my guy here. And I'm going to change my font type to Arial. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to look to see what I got. It doesn't look like I got Arial available to me. Um, so I might have to make a new font. It's not too hard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a new font. So I'm going to type in ST and I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to create a new one. And uh, sometimes I just call it kind of what it's part of. Um, you can call it whatever you want. I would might call it Arial as well. Um, so title block. And then I'm going to set this to the Arial font. There we go and uh, set current, sure, close. So now when I go to here and I modify my properties, I should see my title block font. There she is. Um, also, let's double check the size of this guy. It's 0.13. So let's up mine here to 0.13. Perfect. And then I will just erase out the X's when I'm ready. And then I will go to here, click on it. And I will go to the properties, or I will double click on it. Probably easier to just double click on it. And I'll change it up. So this one here is going to be the drawing name or sheet title. So we'll call it sheet name. And then uh, here, sheet. And we got to spell things correctly, right? Sheet name. And then, uh, you know, again, just keep it, uh, keep it simple, but uh, add some, again, make it some length here so you kind of know. Oh, that's a good point right there. Sheet name won't work because there cannot be spaces in the title. So that's just one more thing to mention there. And we'll hit OK. So it kind of puts that in. And uh, we'll just kind of continue about our uh, our day to day here and just keep on moving forward. All right, so let's go to address here. So address looks like it's about the same as this one. So I'm going to copy him again from the insertion point to the insertion point. Oops. Exited the command too far. Not too bad though, and oh, I missed it that time. There we go, insertion point, there we go. And insertion point here. So now what this will allow me to do is kind of change things up a bit. I'm gonna erase address out. And then again, I'm gonna change this guy here. And uh, I'm just gonna call this guy address. And uh, oops, gotta spell things right. Again, one mistake here follows you on every sheet. So just making sure that things are correctly actually pays off a little bit here. So um, just watch, you know, watch out for things. Uh, make sure everything's good. Um, also, multi-line, I'm going to turn on now. 
because I want this to be able to expand a little bit. And you'll see that in a second here. Um, we'll make it multi-line and you'll see it expand out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick save here and just show you kind of what I did so far and you can kind of see how it goes into the other drawing. So I'm gonna erase out the title block that's currently in there. And uh, most importantly over here, I'm gonna do a quick save. And then what I'm gonna do is go over to drawing two and I'm going to insert block, browse, and I'm going to go to that same title block again. Hit okay. Um, this is important here if it asks you to redefine. Yes, we do want to redefine it. And sure enough, now you'll see all the additional stuff I have here. And also when I go to address here, you can see that I can modify it and make it whatever I want. Blah, 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 blah. So if you, if you skip that and you just hit put it in there and you just want to see what it looks like, that's fine. You can always double click on it at any time and then change it however you want. So the nice thing about this is you can kind of expand the multi-line one and I can put a one, 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 one Jackson Street and uh, you know go through there and then I can highlight all that because I messed it up and change it all to uppercase. So I have caps lock on and then I can go to uh, any town, good old uh, Illinois and then uh, whatever you want to put in here. I mean you can even put the title Maybe it was a job for uh, Widgets & Co. You know, whatever you want to do. And then hit OK. And you can kind of see how it automatically multi-lines it, puts it in here. And whenever I double click, I can modify that text within that block. Again, I don't have to explode the block. Uh, if you notice, can I change the X's for the checked or drawn by? No. So I have to really continue attributing them. And in the next video, we're going to go further into attributes and we'll start creating automatically uh, created fields, but this will get you kind of started with attributing your title block. It's actually pretty simple, and once it's in your main block, wherever you put it in there, it's actually really quick. Um, what we're gonna do now is link these to fields, which will eventually link back to Sheet Set Manager and an updated Sheet Set Manager video. But if you're feeling like getting ahead, you'll notice inside of the videos here, there's also one on Sheet Set Manager that you can go view and it has everything you need on it. Again, if you like the video, subscribe, please. And uh, if you ever have any questions, leave some comments or uh, feel free to contact uh, me at the company and you'll see the link on my uh, image there at the top. All right, you guys have a good day.